your thoughts define me, Daddy. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me. You are my reality. Oh, you're my reality, Lord. I say, Abba, Abba, I belong to you. Yes, Lord, Abba, I belong to you. Even when they didn't know I was coming, even when they didn't know why I was here, Papa, I belong to you. You're more real. You're more real than the skin on my bones. The skin on. The ground I'm standing on. Yeah. Daddy, your thoughts define me. Your thoughts. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me, God. You're inside. You are. Bible says for us to call him daddy. Abba's the only word that you can say whether you're exhaling or whether you're inhaling, you know. Whether you're powerful or whether you're in distress. And that's why we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, you are, you are the Father. And you never leave, God. You never leave. Come on, Justin. You never leave, Abba. And I want to fit them in your shoes Daddy, can I put my foot in your shoes? Daddy, can I lay on your lap? Because you know why You know why I'm crying Before I shed a tear Before I shed a tear Daddy, I just want to say I love you Daddy, I just want to say thank you For never leaving Never leaving, never leaving Never leaving, never leaving Never leaving, never leaving me. Even when I wanted to leave myself, never leaving me. Never leaving, never leaving me. Never leaving, never leaving me. Oh, that's why I love you. That's why I love you. That's why I love you. And you walk with me and you talk with me and you tell. What a joy we share as we tear, we 
right there None other has ever Hello, everybody. Great to have you on board. Come on, and let's do this together. It's a great Monday evening. Uh, I hope you did not all work yourself to a frazzle as I did today. So you have some time to um, give praise to our God. But I'll tell you, when you start racking up the years, you got to be careful how you're out there doing things because you might just find that the body doesn't respond in ways you really want it to respond but we give glory to the lord this evening as we tackle the second day of the week acknowledging god's love and provision for our lives and for that we are just so thankful to him so for our meditation tonight, remember tomorrow in our Bible study, we're going to start to break down this love of God. We talk about that God commands this love, um, that you should be loved. Um, and it's not, as we said some weeks ago, we got to take love off autopilot. It's not automatic. It has to, you have to exercise your will and be determined to love. So it's very important when God says you love God and love others. It's very important. Um, but uh, God didn't just throw the words love around carelessly. He said with your heart, soul, and strength. And that is together in what is called the Shema. We were given copies of that in church yesterday. So you need to put it up in your house, on your doorpost, because you must remind yourself of your responsibility to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. So for our devotion this evening, I want to use a couple of verses of scripture from um, Exodus, the 21st chapter. It's one of my favorites. And um, I, I, although I'll focus on verse 6, I'll read from verses 1 through 6 so you get an understanding of where we're going. These are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. God speaking to Moses here. If you buy an Hebrew, a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve. In the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she hath borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. If the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out free. In verse 6, then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Um, I want to remind us as we get ready to pray this evening of something that is so useful in verse number five, and then we'll go to verse number six. Now, the background to this suggests that for two things, a Jewish person could be sold into bondage or to serve as a bondsman. In other words, a servant to someone else. Some, some, some scripture uses a slave. Um, now, 
the two things that could have a person being sold into this state of existence, one would be poverty and two would be if the person is a thief, robbed somebody, stolen things. When the, if those two charges are there, the judges can, if the person rather is guilty of robbery or a thief, the judges then at the time of Moses could sentence the person to work for six years. In other words, every seventh year was the year of Sabbath, or it's called a sab sabbatical year. In that year, all slaves would be free. Um, so, the sentence for a person in poverty or a person who has robbed something would last for six years. After that, the Jewish um, individual so held in this bondage or slavery or servanthood or bonds, uh, bondsman would have to be released. And this is the divine plan and purpose of God. Now, if, for instance, the seventh year is 2021, and the person was found guilty last year in 2020, that person would only have to serve one year because that person has to be released on the sabbatical year. Very interesting principle God set forth. So there are people who did not need to serve their six years because it, it, six years is if you begin. So if this year, 2021, is a sabbatical year. Next year would be year number one, adding up to the next sabbatical year. So if a person was found in problem this year, then they would be judged and they would have to wait for their freedom at the next, which would be 2028. Very, very important there. Now. Bear that in mind, and let's figure this thing out together. So this was a common assault in the life of these. But I want you to notice, believers, that um, something unique. If the servant declares. Now, there's a time when the person in poverty, that means they're in a position where they can't care for themselves. We can be poor in spirit. We can be poor financially. We can be poor intellectually. Now, that is one of the most common things that could get um, a person into slavery, poverty, very dangerous way to live. And many people are scared of this concept of poverty. Um, this year, though, righteousness sets us on a course to prosper. And, and, and poverty is not only a financial issue because it also affects how well one is educated and education determines how well you can master your thought your reasoning and so on making decisions all these things are predicated on so poverty is really a very bad thing it was never god's intention for us um, and to to have but we have such inequities and inequalities in society that this has become pervasive it has dwelt in every society, not only in the West, we have it in the East, Middle East, and everywhere. Poverty um, has, has, has dogged our world. And so many times we'll see the rich getting overly rich, and the poor seems to be going under. There are times when government will not, their desire is not to make you rich. So let's bear in mind, government's desire is not to make you rich rich or because when you become wealthy you become self-sufficient you become independent of the ruling class but the ruling class idea is to keep you at a level where you're dependent on them it's it's that type of master and slave mentality that has affected every color every race and every kindred so let's go on to recognize what happens here 
And it's a very powerful thing that God has uh, wrapped in this text for us to recognize. So we have an example in verse 5 that it could happen in the life of a slave, a servant, that their time is expired because the, the, the sabbatical year, which is a year of rest, not only for the land, but of people. And therefore, they were not supposed to be um, under hard labor in a sabbatical year. But if the servant declares, now this is powerful because we use the word declaration a lot. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I want you to bear that in mind. If the servant declares this statement goes like this. I love my master and my wife and my children and do not want freedom. Do not want freedom. Freedom from what? Not from poverty or from theft that he might have been charged with. I do not want freedom from my master. Praise God. Why? I love him. I love him. Then his master must take him before the judge. It's very important because he won't be held against his will. It's legally required that he be released. He has to go back before the judge. And after he sees the judge, he will make his declaration before the judge and he'll be acquitted of any charge that's against them. But then the master take him to the doorpost and pierce his ear. This is with a metal uh, object we call an awl. And then he will be his servant for life. Now, that there, there's a caveat in the text because he will be a servant for life. And for life there in the way in which the text was written, until Jubilee, and that is considered like a lifespan. So the idea here, whenever Jubilee comes, and remember Jubilee is every 50 years in the Jewish calendar. We just had one um, in 2017. And so the next Jubilee is due 2067. Now, that's important, believers, to bear in mind. Now, so he will be the servant of the master because at Jubilee, everybody were slaves. No matter what happened, you have to be released. The, 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 the sixth year of your enslavement is a, the seventh year rather. Before you enter the seventh year, you, you're considered to be a sub, on a sabbatical, which is a time of rest, a time of freedom for slaves. But in Jubilee, you get back not just your freedom, but you get all types of blessings wrapped up there. And I'm not talking about that tonight. I want to talk about love for a master. And the, the word that sometimes is used for that is the word Adonai. I love my Adonai. It's also the word used for God. At times when we, we substitute the word Elohim. I love my Elohim. That's my master. Now, I want you to bear that in mind because remember, what is God's primary command? Love God. And here, the gentleman is declaring carefully before he was, it, the idea here that love, love for his master uh, was so strong that he did not desire separation. He did not desire separation separation. Now, Jesus speaks to earthly servanthood, and in Matthew 20 and 27, Jesus said, whosoever will be chief among you, let him be a servant. That word is unique because it's the word doulas. I realized that the Apostle Paul used that word in Philippians 1, 1. Paul and Timotheus or Timothy, the servants or the doulas of Jesus Christ. Now, 
the word he was using there represents the very word that we're talking about here in Exodus 21. So it's a terminology that has a vein or a channel in the New Testament. And the idea here, uh, as Paul talks about it, Paul and Timothy, servants or slaves or bondsmen of Jesus Christ. Now, in other words, you're stating Jesus is our master, as he's saying now. The, the concept is that we love our master. And so there's no chance that we will separate from him. Now, it requires adjudication. Verse number six, you should go before the judge. You see, the confession or that if we will confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Saved from what? Separation. That word is death. That's what that word means, death. So, oh, praise God. The idea here is like whenever you have declared a thing, your master will take it from there. Notice this. When he declared, I love my master, the master didn't just say, okay, well, let's have a party. No, there must be an adjudication. See, that's what righteousness speaks to, because the idea of righteousness is that it should be approved. The, the laws must be met. And when we receive the righteousness of Christ, Christ met the conditions of the law. And then he transferred that righteousness into our lives. Then you become your master through the shedding of blood. Praise God. You remain permanently, sorry, you remain permanently in a relationship with your master, not just by the declaration that you have made, but with the shedding of blood. And so in our case, as we move into the New Testament, it wasn't our blood that stained the doorpost. It's the blood of Jesus. That is why no righteousness we have is ours because the one who was pierced is Christ Jesus. And when we adopt this, believers, we will be God's servant for life. I want you to think about that. What sets the pace for you being a servant for life? Love. Love. Oh, praise God. See, many people turn aside, backslide, or whatever word we choose to call it. You got a question if we truly love the eternal love I'm talking about. Did we truly love our master? That is going to be the determinant of whether or not we spend a week with him, a month with him, 10 years with him, or we decide to stay with him until Jubilee. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So this is how Paul speaks to this um, in, the, in the book of Ephesians, uh, sorry, the book of Philippians. Um, and this I pray, Philippians 1, 9, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense until the day of Christ. We call that jubilee, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of our God. So let me repeat, believers. Let this week be a week when you question yourself. Do you love your Adonai? Do you love your Adonai? Do you love your God? Do you love Elohim? Because if you love him, now notice your wives and your children or your spouse does not go before. The love of the master is first. 
if I love him, I do not desire freedom from him. Freedom from him. I want his burdens. I want to carry his load. I want to be a slave to him. And my enslavement, I declare, is for life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. That your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. You know, one gentleman was being executed one of our church fathers and he declared that 80 years he has been with you and you've never harmed him. And so he would continue to testify about you. Oh, praise God. Father, so many of us get worn out by the way Sometimes the motivation for our being with you is based on what we could receive for ourselves. And when nothing was forthcoming or when things were late in our estimation in coming, we gave up. Teach us tonight, Father, how to recognize that is the indwelling love for you that will sustain the relationship. The days of trials and testings, the days of death, the days of brokenness, the days of tearfulness, we call them evil days. The days when we, we don't seem don't know if we're going forwards or backwards. The days of confusion, the days of grief and pain and sorrow. So many timelines and time issues in our lives. But we pray, Father, that we'll be endowed with the rich fervent, ardent love of God. The one that is rich and pure, measureless and strong. Let this love dwell richly in the core of our being. Let it be knowledgeable, but at the same time surpasses knowledge. So Father, we honor you tonight and we say, Abba Father, dear Father, we belong to you, not for a day, not for two days, but for life. We will serve you in times of plenty, in times of little, in times of criticism, in times of pain and sorrow and hardship. We will serve you, cold times and hot times. We are and we desire to be true servants. How great is your love that we have received and tries, trying tonight to reciprocate. But we fall short, Father. So may the Holy Spirit tonight enhance us. Give us the ability to love truly from our heart, our soul, and our strength. 
Lord, let this love flow to our neighbors. But we thank you that in loving the one who loves his master also loves his wife and loves his children. So we thank you, Sovereign Lord, that in this we can elicit fundamental truths that are relevant to our time. How could we love God and not love our spouses and our children? How could we love God and not love others? And so we adore you, Father, for the truth that comes from your word. Let these dwell richly in our hearts and transforms us into your true children. Thank you for speaking to us, O oh God. Thank you for enlightening our darkness. And thank you for first loving us. Oh, we bless your name this evening. We thank you, Father. Because in this love, we find protection, presence, power. We find our full identity in this great love. Thank you, Lord. We bless and praise you tonight. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. I want to thank you, believers, for the time you spent tonight. And as you go read this text a lot and meditate on it and consider, can I truly love God for life? Can I truly love God for life? Because that is so essential tonight for us to ask ourselves. Once again, believers, thank you for your consciousness, your support for the ministry. And as we continue to diligently work to the betterment of the people of God, and more so, I believe that um, you will continue to diligently work for the one you love until you can do it no more. Um, today, I think, is Charmaine's dad's funeral. It should be finished by now. I tried to reach her earlier, but was unable to. And um, um, others have had those who have passed away and uh, we'll stand with them as they grieve. Um, keep praying for each other. Keep reaching out to each other. Um, we're making various turns in our lockdown. So get your vaccines if you desire to get it. And... Um, if you don't get it, then you'll have to pray harder so that you stick around and can't lock up in the house, everybody. It's time to bless the Lord. Things will go bad. We've got to rise up and bless the Lord at all times and let his praise continually be in our mouths. So let's cut out the um, home thing. It will get to you and you will start finding yourselves at risk of being somebody else by the time they're telling you you're free to go so um we pray for those who aren't well among us that um they will be well and for those who come across the germ in their workplace we want to pray for them um uh, we've come to understand that it's that germ is in the place for mike and mona and those people and the germ got away in there so we just want them to be well that they will turn out okay in all aspects of this issue.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak the word of peace and power and healing, deliverance, security from the virus for the people of God who are entangled or come across it. Lord, we pray their bodies will have unlimited source of power to fight against that which fights against them. We believe that there is power in the blood of the Lamb. So not only is there antibodies, but there is wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. So we declare that precious blood, the blood in which there is life over your children tonight. Those that are ill, those that have come across the disease in their workplace, Lord, we speak your grace upon their lives. We thank you, Father, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his awesome countenance upon you. The Lord grants you peace. Have a great night, people of God. And um, tomorrow night is Bible study. Share these on your Facebook page and invite everybody out. We have to, everybody needs to call somebody and remind them everybody needs to be in Bible study, everybody. Because tomorrow we start looking at loving God from our hearts, our soul, and our strength. You got to understand this love thing before the year is done. God bless you, everybody. Have a great night.